John, no doubt in society today we're dealing with uh, sensitive subjects and changes in thinking on sex and gender, the nature of race, homosexuality, um, and to some degree, people who advocate a, a, a tolerance and diversity, at least historically, have relied upon uh, biological data mm -hmm. in order to support that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I, from your perspective, uh, uh, I, I think while you agree with the conclusion and, and what we should practice uh, as a normative practice among human beings, uh, that there's a potential danger of relying upon the genetics, even though the people who do that want to use the genetics to prove their case. <laughs> yes, that's just right. I, I, I definitely want to agree with the conclusion, but I, um, I would be very resistant to putting much weight on that particular form of argument for it. I don't think that we should try and base that on anything much to do with genetics. I think genetics can be helpful. It has certainly been helpful in the case of race to realize mm. how extremely superficial the genetic difference is that um, to some limited degree explain what we see as racial differences are. I certainly think that's a case where, um, where we should, um, you know, we can, we, can, we can give a nod to genetics as having yeah. helped the argument. Um, but of course, I don't think that had it turned out that there was bigger differences between um, between the races in genetic terms, we'd have been all right to go on being racist. <laughs> and I think this is, in a sense, the problem. I don't think that um, our opposition to um, discriminatory treatment of certain groups of people should be a hostage to mm -hmm. genetics. Um, I think it's morally the case. Now, having said that, I think that um, a proper human biology does give us good ways to understand human diversity better. Um, to, for example, um, to look at the, the, I mean, the general perspective on gender and sexuality points us, as opposed to a traditional view of a very dichotomous development, to a very diverse set of developmental processes. And the fact that the, the, the preferences of people for sexual partners ends up with diversity should be absolutely no surprise to us and mm -hmm. therefore um, certainly no grounds for treating some people as inferior. So, so I think that, that, that a, a kind of fluid processual view of human development is very helpful in avoiding certain kinds of um, distinction between kinds of people that have been used to ground differences in status. But, um, but I, don't think, I don't think we need genetics to make those arguments. I think they can have some rhetorical value in some cases. Um, but I think that, that the problem with that is, is that we certainly don't want to, um, to have our, our opposition to discrimination between different kinds of people, a hostage to what geneticists tell us, <laughs> uh, which I think is, a, is you know, potentially a danger of putting a great deal of weight on um, the findings of genetics. I mean, certainly if we found, as I'm sure we now have realized we never will, but if we found the gene for homosexuality, the gay gene mm -hmm. that people were looking for for mm -hmm. a while, um, this would make absolutely no difference to how we should treat um, gay people. Of course, uh, this, is, this has been constantly debated. When I was in my early philosophical career, there was a big switch from people who, from on the whole, gay activists saying uh, we should be entitled to our sexual preferences to a, a kind of hostile right-wing response to that saying we should oppose um, um, immoral lifestyle choices mm -hmm to gay people saying, no, it's not a preference, it's an orientation. Um, and of course, it's not a preference in the sense that it's experienced by gay people as a choice, it's experienced as, some, as a developmental outcome. That's the kind of people, the kind of um, choice that they end up wanting to make. 
Um, but, but again, the role of genetics in this seems to me to be, um, you know, if it, if it may sometimes have some rhetorical force, but is of very little ultimate importance.